Welcome to part 20C of fixing this Jaguar, Jaguar 420G. At the moment, uh, we're doing the boring stuff. Uh, we are cleaning the engine block of any filth, because uh, there was an engine from a blown head gasketed car. Uh, I doubt that anything would be wrong with it. I think all the issue was in the uh, head gasket, as we're pretty known to go on these sorts of cars. Um, you know, improper maintenance and things like that. I'm still looking for a good deal on a set of head studs. Um, that uh, cylinder head there uh, needs um, to be sent off. I think I'll do that about this week sometime. Uh, just get that out of the way. It's going to cost what it's going to cost, so I can't really do much. So in the meantime, we're doing all the little boring stuff that, you know, you don't really see very much of um, because um, it's not flashy parts. Um, I went out today and got a gasket roll, uh, the cheapest way to get gaskets for this car. And I've traced out the sump gasket and that's what I'm cutting off now. Oh uh, yeah, um, I'll get another part and I'll install it right about now. Trying to find a good deal on head studs, because that's what stopped me from this engine. I think um, head studs, a new set's going to cost me around $300. Peninsula Jaguar could get me a used set for about $165, which I think is a really good deal. If you need head studs, hit up Peninsula Jaguar. Great deal on used head studs. Um, which they said that they'd gladly put in their own engines and their own builds. So, you know, that's got to give you a little bit of confidence there. Um, I got quoted by a, a individual uh, for $450 for stainless um, head studs. And it's like, yeah. Uh, you can get performance head studs from Terry's Jaguar for about 360 something dollars. Um, which, you know, high tensile and then they're open-ended nuts, so they're not like the acorns like this. But what's really cool is I got in touch with someone, again, I don't know if I should say his name, but a very close friend of mine, I've known him for years, um, he used to mess with Jaguars back in the day. And 20 years ago, he took apart a... Jaguar and did a 253 uh, Holden Red V8 swap but in taking down that engine he actually kept the studs and they're in brilliant untarnished condition all stainless I've got about 10 of them you can see like the finish on them it's just fantastic the thread is perfect they're gonna have to be wire brushed out just to get any gunk out but that's it not even a wire brush across the surface that needs to just be cleaned off with some water um, because I don't want to get rid of the stainless finish. Uh, he gave me a, a 10 wet studs, and I need about 14 studs, but he gave me 10 wet studs, which puts me ahead so much. Um, so I went back into my Jaguar, uh, my old engine, and I looked at the head studs that were still in it. Uh, so you have 10 wet studs, and you've got about 4 dry studs. And the dry studs don't screw into the water gallery, but they screw into the uh, deck surface and so they come out a lot better uh, than you'd expect so these came out of the old engine and they're in perfectly usable condition so I've got 10 wet studs two dry studs however if you remember getting that cylinder head off actually bent to dry studs so my only expense for head studs now is to get two of these which I think they're about $15 a piece Spend 30 bucks and I've got a brand new set of head studs ready to go into that car. I am so, so very lucky and fortunate to get these because it saves me so much cash and puts us so much further ahead. You know, now we can drop in that engine because we've got these and, and um, you know, I'm not waiting on buying these or anything like that. So this is fantastic. This also puts me, you know, three to four hundred dollars ahead for the cylinder head. So the cylinder head just got a little bit cheaper, which is just amazing. Uh, so with that set of uh, head studs, what I'm able to do now is, um, well, work out how I'm actually getting these acorns off of these old studs. They've just been sitting with the rest of the studs this whole time. Uh, but I need to now take off these acorns to get them ready and oiled up. Maybe not oil, but like just cleaned out and things. So you can really see the condition of the head studs here. Um, if that co that block coolant passage wasn't enough information already, pretty much thrown this um, block into scrap. It's useless, and I can even show you why. So this stud 
goes down this boss and then screws into uh, the coolant gallery here so it's a wet stud and when I went to take off the Welsh plug so you can see inside where it's perched <laughs> you should be able to see right through that but that's actually a solid piece of shit look at that this engine was fucking toast I'm excavating right now and you can see the stud inside there and where it'd be perched it was thread into there but you can see how this snaps off where this one is what it looks like it should be fortunately these are stainless studs so it shouldn't be an issue anymore two blocks of wood <laughs> clamp it down now this won't be enough to this won't be enough to um, hold the, um, the the stud. So what I additionally have to do lock down those vice grips. We got that in place. So vice grip on a grip with an ooga dooga. And there we go. I couldn't get that off before, but um, if this didn't work though that's when we do the last resort of using heat in combination of this so i'm going to keep going and um get these two off as well um i decided to pop the welsh plugs off of this engine and i found that um there is a there is a little bit of schmuck in there as per standard but it's actually nowhere near as bad as the last engine it makes me feel like that this engine was no longer a luxury but was a requirement since uh, how bad that engine is. So what I've done is I've taped up the top of the block, get all this shit out of the um, coolant galleries, just blast it. I've got all these Welsh plugs out. I've got a new set of Welsh plugs to pop back into it. These are already brass Welsh plugs, so I don't have to take them all out and replace them all. How I'm taking them out is real easy. It's um, really a no-brainer. Start this one. Pliers and you just grab them out. These are all really good. There's about nine um, Welsh plugs in total. Their size is one and five eighths. Okay, just like that. All the Welsh plugs are out. When we put them back in, we'll have to prep this surface here with some sandpaper, uh, get some red sealant, put them back in with a socket, job's done. Anyway, we're going to keep moving on. So I'm going to pop a photo on screen. Um, you can see the amount of debris that's uh, built up in this engine and this is a good engine like this is a really good threads it's not, it, nothing's gonna be wrong with this but you can see even on a healthy engine just how much can be in there so you can start blasting <laughs> as if that's gonna help Fucking use coolant, I swear to god. This is why we're doing this, is because people don't use coolant. There's really nothing wrong with coolant. The more we blast out of here, the less it's gonna block the radiator as well. I'm trying to keep these pistons as clean as I can. I could honestly be here all day getting each flake out but I'm not going to do that because that's boring <laughs> it takes too long so what we're going to do instead is I'm going to get this torque converter off because that needs to be done I've got the air compressor all set up um, I've got the Ooga Dooga all set up so let's give this a go because what I also want to do is count the teeth by hand individually count the teeth and measure the diameter of this flywheel and make sure it's going to be the same as the old flywheel. I've already meshed the starter motor gears on this, just ran it across and it looks like it's going to be okay but you never know with these things. So I'm going to double check the tooth count and the diameter 
and find out if that flywheel can stay on because that flywheel is really not coming off. <laughs> and I've got to do a scrap run soon and that's on the scrap pile. So eh, if I can throw away a flywheel as well, I will. More money. So we don't score the pistons. Get some lube before we turn it over. And a rust inhibitor. Of course, there's not a spanner here, but five eights. Because if you remember from when we took out the differential in that car in the same spot as we're working on this engine, I actually cut that in half <laughs> to make that special spanner to get the brake calipers off. My whole tool kit is wet and soggy from sitting out the fucking rain this entire time. But work in the garage, you have not the garage that you want. Well, I'll be back with you when I get this off and give you my count and diagnostics of what this is and if it matches. Do you see this? Look at this. I was going to get back to you with the tooth count and the torque converter comparison, but I just had to point this out first. I snapped the ring on the spanner. So I'm going to show you how you can do this job if, well, this happens. <laughs> um, you can just grab it and you can just hit it with a hammer very nicely and then you can continue the job with an open-ended spanner. Okay, so sorry for the bad contrast, but I hope this should be clear. Oh wow, an eagle. Holy shit. Oh, screw this, I want to look at the eagle. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Look at him. He's beautiful. Wedgie. Oh, the dickhead Maggie's are attacking it. It's an aerial combat. Wow. Magic is real. Oh, fuck. There it goes. Oh, fuck. I'll put a, I'll put a freeze frame on that. You'll be able to see. It's a witchy. Fly like a <laughs> The Russell Morris song. So now we're going to try to seat the um, the uh, the uh, torque converter into the transmission. That's a simple case of just grabbing it, putting it on. No, it's not. You gotta make sure to spin it. Make sure it's on there. And you might think, yeah, it's all right. But really, that's all right. See how it goes right the way in. And then another step, if you might've seen, and there we go, that's a fully engaged boogie. Feels pretty good. Again, just really wanna make sure. I believe that's how you seek one. That transmission onto the back of this engine, um, we gotta do it this way. So we put the transmission on the engine lift. I've got this block of wood here. I should have it more there, just for safety. And if you're like me, you have bung wheels on your thing, then it can't go exactly straight. Not doing this. And I'll get complacent. All right. At any rate, we're going to have to leave it there. Um, it's great that we have the transmission on to the back of the block. It's more complete. Head starts going next episode when this engine is back into the car. Um, see you next time.